If you know you're going to use the ellipsometer, turn on the controller about 20 minutes before your session. Go to the back of the monochromator and turn the lamp power on. Hit the ignition switch. This will fire up the lamp. The lamp takes about 15 to 20 minutes to warm up. Log into the kiosk and start your session. First thing you'll have to do is calibrate the ellipsometer. Calibration must be done at the start of every session, but only needs to be done one time. In the top drawer under the ellipsometer, you're going to find the vase standard. Use gloves or vacuum tweezers to grab the standard. Make sure you're in vacuum mode and turn on the small vacuum pump. Place the sample at the center, covering the two vacuum holes on the vertical stage. Make sure your aperture is completely open. From the computer desktop, launch the WVase software. Six windows will come up. Each window has their own menu items. If you right-click on any of the windows, you will see a list of menu items. Select the hardware window and right-click to initialize it. Type the username. The hardware window now indicates that we are initialized but not calibrated. Right click under Acquire Data, choose Align Sample. It's going to remind you to insert the alignment detector on the ellipsometer. The sample rotates to normal incidence. We are inserting the alignment detector with the large pin at the 12 o'clock position. Don't force it, rotate it until it falls into place. We don't want to damage the pins. We are now aligning the sample tilt in both directions by using the knobs. In the hardware window, you want to align the crosshair to the center of the graph. The top knob will move it in the Y direction. The other knob moves the beam in the X direction. Once the crosshair is at the center of the graph, within the white area, the sample now reflects the beam into the center of the photo detector. I can now take out the quad detector. Escape from this menu. Make sure to clear the analyzer so it is not bumped while rotating to the measurement angle. We are now aligning the sample in the Z direction to accommodate for the thickness. Click OK or Enter at the software to access this window. Rotate this knob until the signal is maximized. The stage is moving in the front-back direction to accommodate for the thickness of the sample. Once the signal is maximized, you are done with the alignment. You can escape from this menu item. Right-click in the hardware window Select Acquire Data, then Calibrate System. Leave all the default values in place and click OK. This process takes a few minutes. Once it's done calibrating, you will see a calibration graph that looks like this. This routine is done every time you start your session. You're now ready to measure an unknown sample. You can now load your sample on the sample stage, just like this one. We now want to align the sample. In this case, we already aligned the sample, since it is our calibration sample. Once the sample is aligned, under Acquire Data, we go to Spectroscopic Scan. This is where we set up our scan conditions. Change the unit to nanometers. What I know about my sample is that it is a thin thermal oxide. If all I need to know is the thickness and index of refraction, I can limit my scan to the transparent region. In our case, the sample is dielectric and transparent through the full range. For this demonstration, we will limit the range from 300 to 600 nanometers. Let's choose 5 nanometer steps. The thicker the sample, the smaller the step size in order to resolve the interference fringes. The measurement angles are based on the Brewster angle of your substrate. I know that my substrate is silicon with a Brewster angle of 75-76 degrees. Ideally, I would carry out 3 measurements around the Brewster angle, one below, one around, and one above the Brewster angle. 
In our case, let's measure from 65 to 85 degrees with 10 degree increments. For this training video, let's only do one angle at 65 degrees. Always plug in 20 revs per measurement and check the dynamic averaging box. Hit OK. Choose your folder. Type your file name. You can enter some comments. The instrument will move to the measurement angle, in this case, the sample angle of 65 degrees and the detector angle of twice that. The instrument will measure the full wavelength range chosen and then move to the next angle. Progress can be monitored in the hardware window. Let's now build a model based on what we know about our sample. In the model window, select or right-click Add Layer. Select Semiconductors for the Materials group. Select one of the silicon references. No need to enter a thickness for the silicon since it is too thick for the light to go all the way through. Add another layer, this time a dielectric. We go to the default materials and select a Cauchy layer. Cauchy layers are great to model dielectric films. Enter your best guess of the thickness and click on the fit box. In this window, I can generate the data from the model we just created. The simulated data appears in red. This is not yet a good match. Let's click on the Cauchy layer and see if the values make sense. The index of refraction is 1.45, which is fine for thermal oxide. If we had a nitride, 2 would be a better option. But here we have an oxide, so 1.45 is best. The thickness must be the parameter that is way off. By clicking Shift and moving my mouse, I can change the value of the thickness. The generated and experimental data now look a lot more similar. We are now close enough to do a fit. We are only fitting the thickness. The fit is very close. We are now going to fit the AN term. The fit is getting better. After fitting the amplitude, we can now fit the broadness of the peaks using the EN term. The fit is now excellent. The other terms within this layer have to do with the absorption. In our case, there is no absorption. We can also add a roughness layer. It is an effective medium approximation with a 50% void. The change in the fit is marginal and is well within error. So we can remove the layer. Select the layer, right click and delete the layer. Thickness non-uniformity can be fitted by clicking Options. You can save your results by right-clicking on any of the windows. You can also display index of refraction for the selected layer. You can also save your data into ASCII. You can then paste your data into Excel. We can do the same thing for Psi and Delta. Once you're done measuring all your samples, go to the hardware window. Set the angle of incidence to 90. Remove your sample. Finally, exit the software. If you're done measuring for the day, hit the lamp power in the back of the monochromatter, and then turn off the controller.